Hey guys, it's Laura and Jason. Jason's going to show you how to make a... a roasted Brussels sprout and artichoke dish. Hey everybody, Jason here. We're going to be doing a roasted Brussels sprout and artichoke dish. Uh, we're starting out with some fresh Brussels sprouts. I do uh, frozen artichoke hearts because it's a lot easier to work with than a fresh artichoke. Two cans of garbanzo beans, yellow squash, a red onion, four cloves of garlic, four carrots, and then for our seasoning today, we'll need olive oil, which will be our base for the roasting side of it. And then I like to do two different seasonings on the tray. We're gonna use this garlic and, garlic and onion, black pepper and sea salt blend. And then we're gonna do some of it a little spicier with some sriracha. All right, so we're gonna get started uh, with a pot of water here. We gotta get this thing going and bring it up to a boil. We're gonna do this and add all of our Brussels sprouts as our first step. Brussels sprouts are a little bit tougher, so we wanna start with boiling them before we roast to soften them up and make a better uh, overall texture after we finish roasting. If you take these straight to roasting, you're gonna end up with rather hard centers, uh, which isn't very enjoyable. So we're gonna get our Brussels sprouts uh, going in that water, get it covered to bring it to a boil faster. And we are gonna also add just a little bit of salt uh, add a little bit of flavor and the salt actually will help uh, the moisture penetrate into the Brussels sprouts just a little bit. While that's going on, we're going to go ahead and start preheating our oven. We're going to bring it up to 350 degrees. So with this one, uh, as we're doing each of the ingredients, we're going to be looking at trying to get a good distribution uh, evenly across the tray to try to make sure that everything cooks evenly and as we're seasoning, since we're going to be doing a couple of different seasoning palettes across this, we want to make sure that we're getting uh, some of the flavors for, for every section. All right, so with the carrots, we're going to chop these up. Getting everything down to bite size. So we don't want to leave them so big that people have to cut when they're eating, but we also don't want them so small that they're hard to stick to the core. So there's not a not an exact science to this one. Slow them down, and then approximately I don't know I'd say half to an inch or so in terms of length for the carrots into a good size chunk like that should be just about right. All right, and we'll make sure we're trying to evenly distribute these across the pan. Next, we're going to do a little bit of yellow squash. Now, squash tends to cook a little bit faster than some of the other ingredients. So we're going to try to chunk this into a little bit larger chunks. That way it's not overdone uh, while everything else is still cooking. Bite size for squash tends to be a little bit bigger than what we do for some of the harder vegetables like carrots. So we're gonna have rather large chunks, but squash is also easily cut up by just using the edge of a fork. So we're not as concerned about it being quite so small and bite sized. Now the onion crosses a little bit more to the flavoring side of things. So not too finely chopped, but probably finer than the carrot a little bit. You can see approximately there in terms of the, the size of the onion chopped up. And we'll start spreading this across the tray as well. All right. And last on the cho chopping block is our garlic. Uh, the garlic is 
pretty much entirely in the seasoning realm of, of the tray. So with it being more of a seasoning, we will go a little bit finer uh, down to a, a dice level for it. Keeping in mind with this dish also, since it's not like baking where you have to have an exact science with measurements, you can adjust what you're putting in here to your own flavor preferences. So if one of the ingredients on here is an ingredient you don't like, you can exclude it or you can substitute something that you would prefer to have instead. It's really up to you. With our garlic chopped up, we'll start spreading that around on the tray as well. Okay, next we'll do our beans. So when you're doing a vegetarian dish, it's important to think about what vegetable is going to be uh, adding your protein. So beans are an excellent source of both fiber and protein. So when we do the beans, we just give them a drain off. No need to be extremely dry, but just make sure that extra fluid's off of there, right? And just like before, we'll be distributing beans across the dough. Little juggling act there. Hope you're all entertained. All right. So that's it for the main set of the dish. So you can see how that looks all spread out. So we're just going to go ahead and let this sit until our Brussels sprouts are But more or less, we're looking for the Brussels sprouts to be relatively soft. Um, so I'll get back to you when the Brussels sprouts are ready so I can show you how to prep out the Brussels sprouts for the last steps of then adding Of course, never go faster with your knife than you're comfortable with because you don't want to cut those fingers off or nick yourself. Alright, so now we've got a good layer of the Brussels sprouts now up and over the tray. So just mix them in a little bit because we want to get all the vegetables there kind of working together. Then we're going to finish off with seasoning. So we're going to do drizzle of olive oil over the entire pan. This helps with both the roasting process and with trying to keep the uh, vegetables from sticking to the pan. Okay, and then what I'll do is I like to do the couple different seasonings like we talked about. So one half, I'm going to do a drizzle over of sriracha. The other, we're going to use our garlic, onion, black pepper, sea salt uh, blended seasoning. You can use whatever seasoning you prefer. Give that a good shake there. And then over the entirety, I do just a little bit of extra salt. Not a whole lot, but a little bit uh, helps to add a little bit of that extra flavor to it. So that's what our pan ends up looking like. So we're going to pop this into the oven for about 45 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes in, we're going to mix them up a little bit, but we got to make sure we're keeping our sides separate, but we just got to roll them over so one side of the vegetables doesn't get uh, overdone compared to the other. So we'll just set our timer to come back here in about 20 uh, to 25 minutes to check on them, flip them, and give them the last 25 minutes or so. And we'll see here, we're starting to get that char across quite a bit of it. Now the char portion is definitely a preference thing. I love a little bit of char on the outer edge of the uh, vegetables. 